In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up some of your default settings for your cart. So, let's log in first. And we need to go to System Settings. So, here you'll see your store and the URL. So, click Edit. On this screen, you have your store name and your name. Uh, this setting here is actually the name that goes out with things such as emails. So you need to change that to whatever they call to your store. Uh, you also need to fill in your address and your phone number. On the store tab, it's got a title which says your store again. This is actually the title which goes in the heading bar. This doesn't actually go out on your emails, so you need to configure this as well. On the local tab, you should see a country and region state. You should change these to your country and state unless you're actually from Lancashire and United Kingdom, which is highly unlikely. You may also want to change currency here, and it's recommended that you leave this to automatically update currency values. On the options tab, there's a few items. I won't go through them all. Uh, this one, for example, is to change the number of items that you actually have per page, say on category pages. So here it sets 15 but you may want to change that to something higher or lower depending on your theme. This second setting here is actually for the number of items that show on pages in your administration area such as your sales and orders. So you may want to change that depending on your store. If say you've got a busy store you might want to change that up to say 50 which will show 50 orders per page instead. Change that back. Down here, there's a number of options for the checkout. Uh, so you can choose to display the weight on the cart page, allow guest checkouts. You may also want to set your invoices and the default order status. Pending or processing is pretty much what everyone will be using, and the complete order status is what your orders will be set to once you're happy that they're completely done. Uh, in some cases it might be complete, however quite often it will be shipped. Down here you can choose to display your stock as the actual quantity or just that you have it in stock. So if you change this to yes, it will actually show the number of items you've got rather than just yes or no for being in stock. Uh, the rest is pretty self-explanatory. In the image tab, you can choose your store logo, which you can quite easily change to something else. We won't do that for now. And this icon here is actually to change the little icon that goes up here. It's also worth noting all these sizes here. For quite often, different themes will ask you to change the sizes of your product images, say. So it's worth checking all these values to make sure they're correct. On the mail tab we have the default mail method which for most servers should be mail. If you're having trouble and you have F SMTP it's recommended to change to SMTP and enter your details here. Down at the bottom you'll see there's a few settings. Uh, you want to change that to yes if you want a new order email to be sent to you every time you get an order. and this one optionally you can change to yes as well if you want to be notified when new customers register. We'll leave that one as a note. In this bottom box you can actually change the emails that receive these notifications. So it's not just the store owner that will receive them. You could add as many as you want here. Just make sure you put a comma between them. Change that back to mail. The fraud tab is a new feature in 1.5.3 and is recommended if you want to make sure your transactions are all above board. In the server tab we have a number of options which generally people don't understand so we'll go through all of these. Uh, use SSL, this is if you have a uh, secure certificate so if you want a HTTPS address rather than HTTP you would set that to yes. It's worth noting that you need an actual SSL certificate as well 
So you need to get one of those either through your hosting provider or through one of the SSL certificate providers. Change that back to no for now. The use SEO URLs. This is quite a popular option and is recommended you switch to yes. Uh, as you can see here, it says that you need to have the Apache module mod rewrite enabled. Uh, this assumes that you've actually got Apache as your server. You need to check this with your hosting company if you're unsure. And you also need to rename the htaccess.txt to .htaccess. So we'll actually do that now with our install by going into our FTP client. And we'll scroll down. And as you see, here's the .htaccess.txt file. So we'll click that, right click and rename. And we will remove the .txt. Uh, it's worth noticing that this does actually have a dot at the beginning of it. So that needs to be there, so it should be dot ht access. So once that's done, we need to make sure that that's enabled, which it is. Uh, the maintenance mode is if you want to put your store into maintenance mode while you change settings, reconfigure it, and basically to stop people checking out and viewing your products while you're making changes. So for now we'll leave that to now. Uh, the encryption key, in previous versions you'd actually have to change this, but now it actually generates one for you. Uh, it's recommended that you probably change this regardless, just with some random characters in there as well. For out -zip output compression with gzip, this is if your server has gzip compression enabled. Um, in most cases you're better off doing this with Apache rather than through OpenCart itself, but if you do want to do it, I recommend you just put it straight to 9 for maximum compression. This saves your bandwidth and makes your pages load quicker. For display errors, you want to set that to no unless you're actually on a test server. For live servers, you want to make sure that's no because you don't want your customers to see any PHP errors. Logging errors, however, you do want to set to yes. Uh, to make sure that you get all your errors which you can go through and fix if needed. The error log file name we want to change from error.txt to something harder to guess. Uh, file. This is just so that any hackers that attempt to access this file won't be able to guess the name so won't be able to see any errors or any sensitive data. And finally, this last box here is the Google Analytics code box. So if you go into Google Analytics and get the full code that you need to put and then just paste it into this box, it will then be on every page. So after you've done that, we'll just click Save. And that's done.